Do you ever wonder how your body manages to stay perfectly tuned even when you chow down on a burger or gulp a soda? Get ready as we journey into the world of water movement, discussing tonicity and osmosis. You will learn how your cells are the guardians of equilibrium and the final decider of what can pass in or out of the cell. Together, we will unravel just what tonicity is and get a better understanding of this difficult concept. Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. Before we start today's video, I just want to take a minute and ask for your support. If you are finding value in these easy to understand biological videos and want to ensure that they keep coming your way, I encourage you to become a part of our community by hitting that subscribe button. Your support fuels this channel's mission to make biological concepts engaging and easy to understand. Thank you for being a crucial part of our scientific journey together. Okay, now let's dive in. Though we can talk about tonicity and osmosis with respect to all living things, we're gonna specifically hone in to the human body. Since the body is primarily made of water and constantly changes as we eat, drink, and interact with our environment, we're interested in how our bodies keep everything balanced. Since water can freely move in and out of the cells, changes to concentration can and do occur inside the body all the time. If we think of water movement in terms of keeping homeostasis or maintaining that balance, it may make this lecture a little bit easier to understand. One important thing to note is we talk about water and solutes in relation to the cell membrane. If you remember from biology, if you've ever taken a biology class, you learn that the cell membrane is what we call semi-permeable. So think about that cell membrane. It's the membrane that surrounds every cell in our body. It is semi-permeable. That means that only certain things can flow in and out of the membrane and some things are more regulated than others. What that means is that things can't just go in and out of the cell because they feel like it. However, water is one of the things that can easily flow in and out of the membrane. So while things like salts and sugars, like glucose, are regulated coming in and out of the cell, water is able to freely move in and out. And that's why we talk so much about water, because water can change concentrations inside and outside of the cell as it moves. Two terms that describe the movement of water are tonicity and osmosis. The movement of water across the membrane that we just talked about is referred to as osmosis. Water moves freely in and out to adjust concentrations inside and out of the cells. Why? Because the cells in our body want to maintain homeostasis or equilibrium. Now, which way does water move? Water moves from higher concentration to lower concentration. With that said, water moves from higher concentration of water itself to lower concentration of water. So get that straight because you're gonna to want to remember that as we go through the next set, which is tonicity. Tonicity is the ability of a solution to affect the volume and pressure in a cell. And we can describe that solution in three different ways. It could either be a hypotonic solution, an isotonic solution, or a hypertonic solution. Now, what does that mean? A hypotonic solution has a lower concentration of solutes than inside the cell. A isotonic solution, the concentrations both inside and outside of the cell are the same, and then in a hypertonic solution, the solution has a higher concentration than inside the cell itself. Let's take a closer look at each one of these solutions and how they'll affect the cells themselves. We'll start with an isotonic solution because it's the easiest one to understand. 
In an isotonic solution, the concentration in the solution that is outside of the cells is the same as what is inside of the cells. So for our example, let's just use saline and let's just use normal body saline, which is 0.9%. So we'll say that within the cells, it's 0.9% and outside of the cells, it's 0.9%. So if the concentration is the same inside and outside, basically we've reached equilibrium and there is going to be no movement of water at all. So of the three, this is the easiest one to understand because in an isotonic solution, there will be no movement of water as the inside and outside of the cell will be the same concentration or equilibrium has been reached. Now my example has sodium chloride, this could be sugar, this could be potassium, this could be other types of solutes that are there, um, but the inside and the outside would be equal to one another. That would be an isotonic solution, no movement of water. So what about in a hypertonic solution? In a hypertonic solution, the, the solution outside of the cell is going to be more concentrated than inside of the cell. For our examples, let's just stick with 0.9% saline within the cell itself. And we're going to make the concentration of the solution outside of the cell higher. Let's just make it 5% saline. So in a hypertonic solution, the solution outside of the cell is going to be higher than inside of the cell, higher concentration. So we have 5% saline on the outside of the cell and 0.9% saline inside of the cell. Now this is not equilibrium. This is not an isotonic solution. And the body wants to stay in equilibrium, so now we have a problem. And the problem is, is that we're going to have water movement. And which way do you think the water is going to move? Remember, water is going to move from a higher concentration of itself to a lower concentration of itself. Why? Because it wants to create equilibrium. So if the cells inside have 0.9% saline and outside is 5% saline, then water is going to move from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell because there's more water inside of the cell than there is outside of the cell. So water is going to move from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. If a little water movement happens, this isn't a bad thing. But if a lot of water would move out, like in this case, then what's going to happen is the cells are going to shrink. And when they shrink too much, then those cells will die because they're not going to be able to do their normal job. So in a hypertonic solution, because the water is going to move from inside of the cell to the outside of the cell, it causes the cell to shrink. Now let's talk about our final solution, which is a hypotonic solution. In a hypotonic solution, the solution outside of the cell is less concentrated or has a lower concentration than in the cell itself. So again, we'll stay with 0.9% saline within the cell, just like our other examples. But this time, the solution outside of the cell is going to be less concentrated. So let's just make it 0.1% saline. So outside of the cells in our solution, we have 0.1% saline. Inside of the cells, we have 0.9% saline. Again, this is not equilibrium. They're not the same inside and outside of the cell. The body wants to reach equilibrium. The concentration of water is now higher on the outside of the cell. Guess which way water is going to move this time to try to reach equilibrium. Water is going to move from the outside of the cell, from that hypotonic solution, into the cell. So water will start to move from the outside of the cell into the cell. The opposite direction we saw with the hypertonic solution. What happens when water moves into the cell? The cell swells, it gets too big. If too much water comes in, the cell will burst and die. So 
we don't want either one of these two situations happening, a hypertonic or a hypotonic solution. We don't want any one of these two scenarios happening because it could kill the cells. Now, on a, these are very drastic changes. These can happen much more slight within the body and the body can compensate without cells dying. But in a drastic situation, uh, this could kill the cells. That's why we have to think about these things in relation to the body when we think about certain um, things like medications, uh, drugs being delivered through IV, putting more fluid in the body, making sure that that solution is um, the proper solution to be putting into the body. It's if you're a teacher or professor and enjoyed my explanation of tonicity and want to help enhance your students' learning, I've created a worksheet to delve further into this and you can find it on Teachers Pay Teachers. I will put the link in the description box below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. And please make sure to put any comments or questions in the comment box below, including any video topics you may want to see in the future. Thank you.